Hey guys, you've seen me catch a lot of big, beautiful trout like this on video. Why don't you join me on the water? Book a trip with the Kel Kellogg School of Fish and Guide Service, and I will put you on the fish, and I'll teach you how to catch them yourself. We're going to be guiding at Collins Lake this fall aboard the beautiful FHS patio boat. Go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and book your trip now, and we'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. I'll see you there, guys. You just keep reeling. I'm going to slow you down a little, Cal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm number one. You're checking around back there. <laughs> <laughs> there wow. You caught the rock earlier. Well, it's up. <laughs> Keep yeah, he's, why don't you step here? Let me go over there. That way I can jump out here. That's well, perfect. Keep, it, keep a, a nice bend over. in the rod like that. You're doing great. No, you go over there. I'm going to come out there. I can mark my trick yeah, I missed my fish. Oh, look. Oh, nice. Keep on reeling. He's got a hay. Oh, that's oh, a three. Whoa. You going? Nice yeah. fish. Yep. Just keep it, keep it tight. You're good. Move the line. Keep going. Yeah, keep out over here when you get close. Okay. So when he gets close, we'll tell you to take a few steps backwards and just lift your rod, okay? Okay. Big fish. And just keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Beautiful fish. You're just gonna, you're gonna bring him to the right just a little. Yep. Take a picture, Chris. Reel, reel. Keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Nope. Just keep reeling. Don't worry about that. Keep reeling. It's okay, that's okay. totally okay. Keep, keep cranking it. Okay. Just keep cranking. That's the drag working on the reel. Reel. We're about. Come on, Good go tire. baby. Let's do that. Yeah. Reel, 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 reel. Reel it in, reel it in. Reel it in. Now lift just oh, a little. Yeah. Lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up. There you go, he's in the net. Oh my goodness. Look at that sucker. That's a that's an speed clown. Check it out. What an incredible fish. Are you filming what? Pull your mask down. You're right. What an incredible fish. That's on the uh, speed spoon going about 3.2 miles an hour. I don't know what it weighs, six, seven pounds, right? I got a scale here. Check it out. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. The barometer is dropping, the wind is blowing, and rain is on the way. It looks like Northern California is slipping back into a wet pattern, um, something we look forward to here in the North State during a late fall, early winter. Um, we need all the rain we can get for spring. We need those lakes to fill up so we can get out there, get after those kokanee, those kings, the trout. Um, we need the rivers to blow out. We need the delta to clean up. It's just all good when we start getting rain in Northern California. I just got back from a week at Collins Lake and I'm getting ready to head back up there again and I wanted to, wanted to take a few minutes to give you guys a fishing report. The fishing at Collins is ranging from good to fantastic depending on the day and the conditions. Um, I've talked to a lot of people out on the lake, I've talked to a lot of people that were bank fishing and uh, I've got a chance to meet a bunch of really cool anglers out on my own boat. So it was a really fun week um, and we caught some really big fish. We caught an eight pounder. We caught a seven pounder. Um, we had a few in the four pound class. We had several holdover fish that ranged from 18 to 24 inches. Those fish were a little more sleek and a little more athletic than those big heavy bodied planters. Um, so bottom line is a lot of people had big smiles on their face and we got to meet up with some very, very handsome rainbows. Um, and we got them primarily doing two things. We got our fish power trolling early and power trolling later in the day when the breeze kicked up 
primarily with speed spoons. That was our number one bait. That's what we got that eight pounder on. We got that fish trolling at about three and a half miles an hour right after lunch. It crushed a clown pattern speed spoon, trolled about 10 feet deep, I guess. Um, the other lure that's been working for us is the maglip. The maglip continues to produce fish, as does our speed shad, but uh, hands down, our most effective power trolling uh, lure is the speed spoon in a variety of colors. We've used the black chrome early and caught some very nice fish on it. We've, we've used the orange and chrome early and caught nice fish on it. And again, the clown pattern has been producing, particularly later in the day when the sun gets up, the clown pattern seems to take over and that's working very, very well. When the bite slows down and we have to, you know, correspondingly slow down, we get a pretty good shot of action early in the morning, say for the first hour to 90 minutes of daylight. Then the bite slows down. We see the fish drop in the column a little bit and uh, they get a little more reluctant to chase, a little more reluctant to feed. We've been doing the damage with our mini willow leaf dodgers teamed with threaded worms on slow death hooks. We're running that worm about 30 inches behind the blade. The blade is just there putting out some flash and vibration to catch the interest of the fish. They come in, they see that worm, they smell it, they taste it, it's real meat and it's game on. Um, we're also mixing in some, some of our Trigger Spoon Juniors and some tiny Dick Knight Spoons and we're running those right under the surface. The deepest fish we caught last week was 21 feet. Most of our fish came in the top 15. Um, we got a seven pounder on Sunday trolling a willow leaf and a worm. That fish came just after lunch. That fish was only five feet deep. Um, we're trolling those rigs anywhere from 1.5 to 1.8 miles an hour and uh, we're typically putting out one of the small spoons as a top line, just having it out there dancing and flashing to pick up any fish that are right under the surface. There's a lot of deep marks and there's a lot of deep bait. I personally have not been able to get those fish to go and I'm kind of ignoring them at this point. Um, I'm working at top 20 religiously and uh, like I say, our two biggest fish, the seven pounder and the eight pounder, they came right up on top. The eight pounder, about 10 feet deep, two colors of lead core. The seven pounder, he came on one color of lead core, about five feet deep. Um, both of those fish came out over the main channel. We haven't been doing much up in the river arm. We've been getting an early bite up around the mouth of the river arm. We've been picking up a few fish on the dam, but mostly it's been in the central part of the lake over deep water, but not fishing super, super deep. I see the bank guys picking up some nice fish. They're soaking power bait. I've seen the guys down by the dam hook up. I've seen the guys fishing at the mouth of Elmer's Cove hook up. And uh, I met a few people out on the lake that were hooking fish too. Some guys are trolling worms. Some guys are pulling speedy shiners. Other guys are pulling my speed spoons. I saw one guy with a, about a four and a half pound trout that he caught on one of my trolling flies. So it's happening. There are definitely bite windows throughout the day. You got to stay patient. You got to keep your head in the game. You got to fish with faith, especially when you're fishing near the surface. You're not going to see a lot of marks up near the surface, but that's where you're actively feeding trout are. If you start seeing surface activity, keep those worms in the water, but be sure to get that little spoon out there. We're only trolling the spoon about 45 feet behind the boat. We're putting it out to one side and just letting it do its, do its thing out there. It's not wide open on the spoon, but you'll definitely pick up one or two or three bonus fish on that spoon and you're gonna have to work them through all the other lines that's challenging in itself and that's part of the fun but uh, on that on that surface spoon we've got fish up to about three pounds but definitely for the big fish threaded worms behind the mini willow leaves and fast trolling with the speed spoons first thing in the morning and during the first push of breeze in the afternoon um, the barometer is going up and down. The surface temperature is dropping. That makes for challenging conditions. I don't know what I'm going to see when I get back up to the lake this week. Um, they're forecasting as much as three inches of rain. So I'm expecting that there may be some color in the water. So I threw some traditional willow, uh, willow leaf um, metal flashers into my tackle assortment some of the rooster trolls from yakima bait stuff like that if i get up there and the water's off color i know i'm going to have to do a lot of slower trolling and those strings of blades are just going to help attract fish into the spread and they're going to find that worm if it's really cloudy i'm going to be pulling those in that anywhere from one 
to one and a half mile an hour range and I'll be running some super bright spoons and plugs. Um, I might mix in a fly, you know, the pinks, the orange, bright stuff like that. Might throw in a maglip that throws a ton of vibration, maybe a bright pink maglip or a bright orange maglip that, you know, a smaller one that's going to run near the surface about six feet deep. It's going to vibrate. It's going to put out a lot of, a lot of, you know, wounded fish impulses at those lower speeds. So that's pretty much the picture at Collins Lake. I would strongly encourage you to get out on the boat with me this December. I have a few dates left between say the 1st of December and the 13th. And, uh, I gotta say guys, I am on some very big fish. I, I'm on some holdovers that look, they look like steelhead, they fight like demons. They're just awesome, awesome fish. I suspect those were penfish last year. They got into the lake, they spent the summer feeding on shad. They're lean, they're mean, and when you fillet them, they are bright red inside. And I'm also on those big, giant uh, planters. They're also red inside. They're great for smoking. They're just dandy fish. You talk about put up a a dogged battle. I mean, we had some 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 crazy runs out of those fish, some prolonged fights, some big surface explosions. Just just it's all good up there. So, anyway, if you want to book a trip, go on over to fish hunt shoot dot com and uh, see what's available on the calendar if you're looking for gear to do it on your own same place check out my store and uh, hopefully you will be yelling fish on i look forward to seeing all you folks out on my boat here in the future um thanks for all the support i'm cal kellogg i'm signing off for now i gotta go cover a wood pile with a tarp that's gonna be fun in this wind you have a great day and i will catch you next time right here on youtube i hope you enjoyed seeing all those fish we caught last week and uh, once again i hope to see you on one of my rods reeling in a big beautiful rainbow just like the ones you saw in this video i'm out of here i'm kel kellogg have a good day guys